What day is it? 11th of December? Yeah. Halfway through December. This is not, everybody loves my view. I love my view too. I've been looking at it for 35 years. But this is not good. Utah's a little, um, I hope this isn't uh, a f our future prediction here. We need more mountain or snow up in the mountains. I can't even talk this morning. So pray for us. What are we doing? So this is a truck from Texas. Holy crap, it's warm out here. Yeah, yeah, you gotta take that jacket off. <laughs> so this is a truck from Texas. He thinks he burnt a hole in his piston. It's a uh, 2017 Duramax. So this is the first year of the L5P. Yeah. He has like 227,000 miles on it. So, so well, let's listen to up it. Here. Does it, is it miss? Is it totally missing? Yeah. So I fired it up. It's got a dead mist, and then I opened the hood and blow you, by. Yeah, I opened the hood and you can see an oily mess around the oil cap here. Oh yeah. So I took the oil cap off and you can feel like a rhythmic puff. Like it's, just... it's got straight compression coming into the crankcase from a cylinder. Okay. So I'll fire it up and you can see. Okay, you see that? That's a dead miss. On my shoulder, I can't reach that damn thing, dude. Oh, jeez. Have her come around. Come on over. You can see the rhythmic puffing coming out of there. I can try to hold the cap there, but you can feel the cap. It's just puffing that cap. Yeah. Then it had a bunch of smoke, obviously, too, while Have you done a, uh, a balance on it? Do you know what cylinder it is? It's throwing a misfire code for cylinder eight. So I think we can pull the glow plug out and take a peek, and is uh, eight, I'm pretty sure it's going to be obvious what we I, can, I, don't, I can't remember. Is eight the right rear cylinder on this motor? It's the left rear. Left rear? Yep. Okay. You know, I guess the next thing would be to verify for sure, you know, that it, it actually has a hole in the pit. But yeah. Go ahead and shut Let it off. Shut her off. You got all his after treatment on here still? No, it's all off. It's been deleted. So. See, and the reason I ask that is, is that's another thing. You know, when you when you have a, a cylinder that's misfiring like that, you are just wrecking your after treatment yeah, system. Yeah, it's just throwing tons of straight fuel down at those catalysts and filters yeah. and just destroying them. Destroying so. them, so we don't have to worry about so luckily, that. Luckily, yeah, it'll be a little like if we fix it, it'll be a little smoky, but it'll all just burn out and yeah. be fine. Yeah. So. And, and these are the things as a mechanic, if you guys are working on these, if they still have the after treatment on them, and you know, just like a car, a gas car, if you've got misfires and things like that, you're, you're wrecking um, your after treatment. And so you want to like advise the customer, yeah, if we get this thing running, you know, we might have to deal with those issues. I think one other thing I'll test too is I'll just pull the fuel filter out. We'll see if we got some contamination yeah. in the fuel as well, yeah. too. So why, why did it burn a hole in the piston? Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. that way we can be like, yes, you do need a motor, but you're also going to need, need a full fuel, fuel system. system. Yeah. These do have the revised CP4 in them. This was the first year they did the revised CP4, which were better, but we'll still check it out and make sure, see if we find anything wrong there as well, okay. too. Yeah, cool. That's that's the best way to deal with these. You know. You, you try to give the customer as much up front of, of the possibilities. It doesn't do you any good to hide facts that you know might come to light. Tell the customer, hey, because this went down, we've got some other things that we need to look at. And some of them you can't, you really can't tell and know till you get it up and running correctly. Um, but the fuel system, for sure, we can inspect. No after treatment. But, yeah, and uh, it does have a tune on it, obviously, because it's been deleted. Right. So that'd be another thing that could be a potential issue as well. Right. So, um, does he? Do we have uh, authorization to bore scope that hole? I believe so. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, let's take a look at it. Right, so we got the fender liner off of the truck and you can see there's a lot of oil in there see all the oil coming down the valve cover and 
That's probably from excessive pressure just pushing out the gaskets inside the engine. So we're gonna pull the number eight glow plug, which is, of course, the very back one. <laughs> Couldn't be one of the easier ones. So we'll get that nut off and then pull the glow plug out. And then we'll be able to stick a bore scope in there and um, see what the piston looks like and do a compression test if we need to. The hardest part of the whole job is not losing that little nut. Here's the glow plug. You can see it's really wet, like oil, which is not a good sign. That should be dry. <laughs> you know, the, the combustion should burn anything. If anything on this tip, we should be finding soot, not oil. So that's not a good sign. I gotta turn the starter over a little bit, but I dipped the camera in there and it went right into a pool of oil, which is not a good sign. <laughs> so let me bump the starter. I will fish this back in there. There we go. Let's see. You can see we're down inside the cylinder now. There's a bunch of oil on that piston. I'm trying to see if I can find the crack. Grab a picture. Yeah, you can see it right there. We got a hole through the crown of the piston. It's right in that center section. So you can see this is our piston. This, the center section is up here, but towards the crown, this is the crown of the piston. We got a big hole right here in our piston. So that's allowing the compression gases to go straight down into the crankcase, causing our blow by that we're getting in the misfire. So. Unfortunately for this customer, what it means is <clears throat> we're going to have to rebuild this engine. Um, the piston's gone bad, and luckily he's probably still got a pretty good core. So we're going to go pull the fuel filter off of that Duramax, that 17L5P, and see if we see metal in the fuel system. So that way we know if we've got a high pressure fuel issue or if it was just the injector itself that went bad. Let's go take a look. Oh yeah, I look down inside. You see right in there on the bottom, got quite a bit of metal in that fuel system. Let me drain a little bit more fuel out and you'll be able to see it. 
Even better. Let's see all that metal down there in the bottom. So, odds are that he had a high pressure fuel issue and one of his nozzle got plugged up and so it's just started, instead of getting an even spray pattern on top of that piston, it started acting more like a blow, blow torch and those nozzle um, openings plugged up and so it just started shooting fuel in one spot on his piston which creates a really hot spot on that piston and causes it to burn through and melt or crack and lead to a damaged piston like he has now. So that's why it's super important anytime you change your fuel filter just look you know look in the bottom of your bowl you know see if you start getting metal in there and if you start seeing metal in there then you know you need to do something about your fuel pressure system and have it looked at to see what's going on and what's potentially failing before it actually takes out your whole engine. The next day. So the Duramax, um, the guy just came and picked it up. Oh, really? Yeah, he's not going to fix it. Um, he just doesn't have the funds right now yeah. to fix it. So he was appreciative that we gave him all the information. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you win some, you lose some. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. that one with the high pressure issue, it's going to be an oh, expensive bill. Yeah, yeah, that's expensive. That's just bill. not an engine. Yeah. The engine, got, the engine went out because the fuel system's contaminated. Yeah. I mean, that's my figuring on it. So, yeah, yeah, that makes it, that adds another easily, even on an engine overhaul, your eight, 10 grand additional. Yeah. Know, fix that problem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So on this Duramax, I thought what I'd do is I'd show you, um, you know, we found metal in the fuel system. Everybody wants to know, wow, how'd the metal get in there? It's not from where you bought your fuel. It's from what happened once the fuel got into this, these high pressure pumps, particularly the CP4. Um, when that thing starts grenading itself and coming apart, it throws all that matter, of course, into the fuel system, causes injector problems, uh, either overfuels or underfuels the vehicle, burns holes in a piston. It's a great oxidizer, uh, diesel fuel. And too much of it burns holes in a piston, just like this one we showed you in the picture. What we're going to do here, I'm going to take, take these CP4 and a, this one. Let's go ahead and pull this screen out of here and see if we have any metal in this one. Now, the reason I want to show you this is the customer declined the repair because the repair, it's got a hole in a piston. It needs a motor. Not only needs a motor, it's going to need the entire fuel system and an upgrade. And on the Duramax, instead of, uh, we're going to put a CP3 on it because we can't do a DCR. So there's an upgrade. Now, this quantity valve from looking at it with just my eyeball, doesn't look like it's got too much shit on it. Let's pull the one out of this one. We got a whole junkyard of these things around here. Nobody rebuilds them, there's not cores on them. Yeah, this has got some metal down on here. You can see it on my finger. But we can go look at it under a microscope. But let me show you why they're failing. This is the new uh, HP4. HP4. Mm -hmm. But we kind of want to show you some iterations. Now, everybody, don't get too locked up on your brains. I mean, guys that really know are going to know this kind of outlet on a CP4 is a power stroke pump. We're talking about a, a truck that went down here that's a Duramax. So they're a little, the, the design, the outside design is a little different, but the inside guts are basically the same thing. Right. However, Ford on their CP4 in 2000. 20-ish. 20-ish went to a, uh, a, a, pinned. a pinned piston or plunger, whatever you want to call that thing. And that plunger rides on this cam lobe here. What happens is they turn, that's why they started to pin them. When they turn, they just they just wear out. They don't this roller doesn't doesn't roll. Almost like this. Yeah. You can see. This one's super bad, but I mean, yeah, that one's. But as soon as they just, as soon as they start grenading like that, all that high pressure fuel goes where directly into your injectors. Right. They went to the HP4. Yeah. So Duramax went to the HP4 basically 2017 to current, which Denso makes that pump. And now, if you look at this, it's a little more forgiving. Instead of this solid cam, that's that's just and that look at the lift on that i mean that thing that thing's got to ramp up from here to there creating 30,000 psi if, if it's called on and needed 
And this one here, you got a bushing. Basically what that does is that just sits there like that and then it just pushes that up. You can see how that would push that up. So totally different situation, a lot more easier. You don't, the lubricity, they've kind of taken our need for lubricity out with this design. We still need it. You need to lubricate steel to steel parts, but it's a whole lot better than the CP4. Now, Miles, for the older vehicles, there's some upgrades uh -huh. uh, that we want to do to avoid grenading because this poor guy, he, uh, this is on a Duramax. Uh -huh. He didn't have a lot of miles on it, but you know, on our inspection, he came in, thought he had a hole of piston. We bore scoped the engine, uh -huh. burned right through the piston. Uh -huh. Why does a hole burn through a piston? Bad injector, bad typically. In, bad injector. Yeah. I mean, 99% of the time, that's your, that's your cause for it. Right. Why does an injector go, go rogue like that? Most of the time, contamination. Right. You want to avoid all that nightmare. Um, yeah. You can upgrade your fuel system. We can put uh, a CP4 disaster prevention kit on them. There's, there's all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so on the, on the power strokes from 2011 to current, you can do the disaster prevention bypass kit from our friends at SNS. It's 400 bucks, basically plus labor to install unless you do it yourself and it's 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 a do-it-yourself or it's not above the pay grade that, that no thing. i mean it, it's it's about as easy as it can be you have to access here and that the is difficult valve, yeah that that is the most difficult part and then setting it up uh and mounting it but that's a lot less complicated than getting there that's it, that's that's the that's the entry that that's the grenade uh the insurance against the grenade. I mean, the grenade can still go off, right, you but still you don't have get shrapnel in your, in your fuel system. Correct, it captures, when this fails, it captures all of the metal in a filter system so that it does not go to the rest of your fuel system yeah. and cause all that damage. So then you still have to replace your pump when it fails or you convert the pump. And Luke at SNS Diesel, what's up Luke? Uh, they've even, he, told, he was telling me at PRI they got a video out on this thing where they actually like took one of these pins out or this, this plunger out, made it, turned it sideways, cranked it up. He said they even like put some cake. They were eating cake and threw some cake in yeah, there. Yeah, they and put dirt. I mean, and they, they, yeah, they, they intentionally sabotaged Sabotaged the fuel system, put their da disaster prevention kit on it, ran it up till it just freaking basically died and blew up on the freeway yeah. and took it down and, and determined that uh, not a drop, no contamination at all Correct. got into the injector. They, they replaced the pump, fired it back up and it ran totally fine. Yeah. Or you can do the DCR conversion kit, which just gets rid of the pump entirely and puts it to something that is bushing driven similar but better than what this hp4 pump is most people as we talk to them about the options this is still a time bomb so most people just do if they have a power stroke from 2011 to current they just say get rid of right. this they're like if i'm going to have the cost later or now i'm just going to bite the bullet now and do the dcr conversion on a duramax from 2011 to 2016 for like the lml's you can do a CP3 conversion to get rid of that. SNS does, Fleece, and BD, they make a CP3 conversion to get rid of the CP4 pump and just do a CP3 yeah. pump. And everybody, that's another question. Why did we go from the CP3 to the CP4? We're still trying to find the engineer that made that decision. <laughs> so with all of this mess, all of these ticking time bombs, if you're after any of these solutions, you can get them from our website. We'll put a link in the description below and just go to davesautorepairutah.com. You can buy these conversions, these fixes, so that you can get rid of the ticking time bomb and drive in peace.